this is from Mama Sarah. Glory and honor be to the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our all and all. We praise his holy name once again. He has brought my daughter, Sister Ruth, to another milestone. Tomorrow, the 15th of January, 2024. Great things he has done and greater things he will do. Another one is from Sister Dokas Mukulam Kudal. It's a prayer request. It says that today, the 14th of January, 2024, marks another milestone in my life. Please pray for the Lord's guidance and protection over my life and my family. Also pray that my feet will not depart from his presence, even as I yearn to live a life worthy of the gospel. Shall we have a word of prayer? Shall we please pray? Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and appreciate you once again. We thank you for another day. We pray that you will help us to draw more closer to you. Even that, Lord, we are here to fulfill a portion of the scriptures that tells us not to depart from the assembly of the saints, Lord. We are here to see you. We are here to hear from you. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Deliver us from every works of the enemy. May our years, Lord, be attentive unto you. May we praise you. May we offer unto you according to how you have blessed us. We thank you for the life of our sister Ruth and our sister Dorcas for bringing them onto another milestone. May your grace be sufficient upon them. May you help them, O Lord, to do well. May you help them and protect them, deliver them from every works of the enemy. Provide them good health and all that they need. Bless them and bless their hopes. Keep them safe deliver them from every works of the enemy. We are grateful also unto you that, Lord, we are here, Father, to fellowship with one another. May you grant us grace that we yield ourselves unto you, deliver us from all iniquities, Lord, and cause us to be attentive unto your word and to have peace with one another. As the bars goes round, Father, May your children give, Lord, from the depth of their hearts. If there be any that will not be able to give, we pray that another opportunity may you provide in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Commit the entire service unto you. The preaching of the word is in your hands. May the word of life set the captives free. May you heal the sick, O Father. Deliver the afflicted in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are brethren who could not make it today. Father, as your word goes, Father, May you convict them, Lord, that another time they will be able to make it. We pray that, Lord, may you come and dwell with us and see us through the service. That in the end, all the glory and the honor that you deserve will be given you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Shall we be seated? There's a song request from Mama Love. Shall we give Mama Love a clap of offering as she comes to the house of the Lord? Thank you. Mama love you. Okay. Please let's give her a clap of okay. hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. E jo nya me na yem ye dosu. Awa ha ma ya wa kwa ina mo.
reading from here number 317. I have been changed. Let's join by copy.
Let's give the Lord a mighty clap of praise.
Amen. Shall we be seated? The Sunday school junior class would like to have a memorial verse recitals presentation. On this note, I would like to invite the Sunday school superintendent to take over. Let's give him a clap of him. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I will not sin against thee. We shall hear a rendition from the Sunday School Junior class this morning and very shortly. We we'll invite them to come right up here with a song. Psalm 91, 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. The Bible. The Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding. Its histories are true and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be safe and practice to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here paradise is restored, heaven open, and the gates of hell is closed. Christ is his ground, our soldier, the good, the design, and the glory of God is end. You should feel the memory, root the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mind of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is giving you in life will be opened at the judgment and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who travel with this hard content. Amen. 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 Proverbs 19.5 a false witness shall not be unpunished. A false witness shall not be unpunished. And those who and those who speak lies shall not be escaped. Amen. Chapter 7, verse 14 to 15. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may not refuse the evil, but choose the good. Amen. Amen. Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 35 and 38. In the sixth man, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a wedding and gave to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most. Therefore, Thou shalt give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 
chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Amen. 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 Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law. Amen. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 8, verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servants, Do this, and he doeth it. Amen. 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 Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Foolishness is born from the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Amen. Amen. ABC of a true Christian, accepted in the beloved, born of God, crucified with Christ, delivered from the power of darkness, and rich in everything in him, forgiven for Christ's sake, grounded in love, hid with Christ in God, instructed in the way of the Lord, justified by his grace, kept by the power of God, led by the Spirit of God, made near to God by the blood of Christ, nourished with the words of faith and good doctrine, ordained to eternal life, perfected forever, quickened together with Christ, redeemed from the cares of the law, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, translated from translated to the kingdom of his son, unblameable in his sight, victorious through our Lord Jesus Christ, washed from our sins in his own blood, yet over, over all by the blood of Christ, zealous of good works. Amen. 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 First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Amen. Amen. Psalm 37, verse 16 to 17. A little that a righteous man had is better than the riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholded the righteous. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, verse 7 to 10. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil reports and good reports, as deceivers be yet true, as unknown, but yet well known, as dying, but relief as chastened and not healed, as sorrowful, but yet rejoicing, as poor, but making many rich, as having nothing but possessing all things. Amen. 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 Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than two and so, blessing to the body, and thanksgiving of soul and spirit, and joint and mouth, and is kinder the thought and the instant of the heart. Amen. Amen. Someone, blessed is the man that was not in the 
son of the ungodly. They are standing in the way of evil. They are seated in the seat of comfort, but it delights in the law of the Lord. And in this law that he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bring forth its fruit in its season. He leaves shall also not wander, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Surely the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor of the congregation of the righteousness. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Amen. 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 Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the blood shall not be upon you to destroy you. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and thy righteousness is of this year, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Amen. Amen. Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. He shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 34, verse 1 to 4. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me together. And let us exalt his name. I saw the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Amen. Galatians 4, 16. I therefore become your enemy because I've told you the truth. Amen. 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 The children will be recessing. Thank you for the attention. God bless you all.
Hey, please, you I'll keep singing this song to you right there, Minister. I'll be. Shall we have a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning once again for the privilege, for the opportunity granted unto us to be able to come into your divine presence. Lord, to come and worship you, to come and hear a portion of your word. 
to check our standing with you, to check our soul salvation. Heavenly Father, we are here this morning because we recognize, Lord, how needful we are of thee. We are praying that, Lord, may you come and minister your word to us. Lord, lifting us up onto higher grounds, drawing us even closer unto thee. For Lord, when we look at the world around us, there is nothing left but the going home of the bride. I praise that, Lord, all the times that, Lord, we do come here, let it count towards our preparation for our home going. And this morning, Lord, may it not be an exception. We pray for those that may be listening to us online. We pray that, oh God, may you speak to their hearts as well. Lord Jesus Christ, bless everyone that will be hearing your voice today. We also pray, Lord, and commit wherever the saints of God have gathered. Our prayers that may you bless their gathering. We've gathered because your word instructs us to be so. Your word tells us that we should not neglect the assembling of ourselves together, especially, Lord, when we see the coming of the Lord drawing near. May you bless us, take control of the service. Any weapon of the enemy against the service today, Lord, we condemn and we destroy it and we pull it down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift up your mighty hand, Lord, and reign supreme in our hearts and in the service. We pray this with all faith and thanksgiving in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Shall be seated. Amen. Amen. So once again, we want to welcome ourselves into the service of the Lord. And we would like to listen to these announcements before we go into the preaching of the word. We thank God for the children and for the praises that they continue to offer unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, one time they were singing praises as Jesus was um, getting to uh, Jerusalem. Matthew 21, verse 15. And when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. We are certainly not so displeased. <laughs> we are not so displeased. We're glad to see what the children are learning. God bless well, God now, now, to to be a teachers. And they said unto him, that is to the Lord, Hear us thou what they say? Jesus said unto them, Ye have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings that has perfected praise. So we thank God for the children. And God bless the Sunday school teachers and all the efforts that you put in it. Amen. Your Amen. labor will not go unnoticed in the presence of the Lord. The trustee board reminds the church of the offering towards the expansion project. Hallelujah. We have to do what we can. When I was in Australia, in Australia uh, Brother Quasi, who used to come here that I visited, his profession is he's a structural engineer. And so he did make a comment to me. He did make a comment no, to me. A, 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 a that, brothers, you have to really do what you can to finish the structure 
as quickly as you can. Because of the exposure from the sea. Because he was saying that if, if the, uh, the sea breeze attacks the iron rocks, it will just weaken the structure. So okay, I'll convey that message when I get back. So all of this is just to make sure that we can complete the structure. Hallelujah. Make sure the pillars are all properly cladded. So that means they become uh, impervious to the sea breeze. So that was his, his, his note of caution. Amen. So every Sunday we keep reminding ourselves about the offering towards the expansion project. As well as also the church welfare fund. God willing, next Sunday, which will be the 21st of January, there will be the child naming and dedicational service for the baby girl of brother Aaron Azu and sister Grace. Can you ask me not here? Azu, you Grace. I'm a Kamibi, Bill of Abadi, I will let you allow each other. Then this coming Friday, there's a program for the funeral service of the mother of our sister, Ruby Ashite. Uh, it's Friday, 19th January 2024 at Ayiwe. Ruby Awo Yala, So that's for the information of the church. We want to rejoice with those who rejoice. And mourn with those that do mourn as the scriptures instruct us. Yeah, this coming Saturday, there will be a youth meeting from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's going to be a special meeting. We don't want to limit it only to the youth. We would like to talk about receiving the Holy Ghost. And so we would like to invite the whole church. You are invited to come on Saturday. When you hear some of the things that I will talk about this morning. So we want to just use that opportunity, that time. Amen. Amen. And then uh, next two Sundays, there will be brothers meeting after the service. When Sunday, 28th of January. And today after the service, there will be church officers and ministers meeting, the time is 2 p.m. On Sunday, the 4th of February, 2024, that's in three weeks' time after the service, there will be couples meeting. The topic will be knowing and understanding the emotional and sexual needs of our spouse for emotional balance in marriage. We will have Sister Charity Amatefu and Sister Extra Hansen to take those two to take those topics. And then on Sunday. The 4th of uh, February, there will be one year anniversary celebration of our late brother Emmanuel Sowa. And on the Saturday preceding the Sunday, there will be a wreath laying ceremony. 
at the cemetery. The time is 7 a.m. Oh, that you know, when I have a car, I have a few, it's an offer for it. And lastly, uh, there will be child naming and dedication service for the, ba for the baby of brother Obed and sister Lizzie Sowa on Sunday, February 11th. No, what's the new one? We need to make a comment. No, you mean Obed, Inga, Mabifa, Kava, Aba, Tulao, Luchod, Yabia. A pen was found at the female uh, washroom. So if it is yours, please see Brother Vincent for identification and collection. I got a pen, Lajia, and a pen, Kuye, any year, sure, no year, Kaju, or no idea. Now, you mean Vincent. So God bless you all. In charge of him. And it's good to be back in the service of the Lord. We thank God for the service last Friday. Stay on course with the star. God has sent only one star messenger in this our day. And just like the wise man, he decides whom he reveals the star to. But when you have caught the revelation of the star, you want to follow the star so that you remain on course. Many are falling off from following the star. That is what the Bible said. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the truth. And we see that all happening around us. My prayer is that God will be gracious unto us that having seen the star, Having seen the star, we want to follow it all the way to oh, the end. Because the star led them to the way. And in every age, God has a star. And these stars are associated with the authority and power of God. Praise the Lord. And the day to make sure they shine in the midst of darkness that God's children can find their way around. That is the pattern of God. Hallelujah. He says, surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And one time, everybody wanted to hear from God. And when God came down and spoke to them, they were all scared. So they told Moses, go and listen. And come and tell us after you hear from God. And God said, Moses, the thing that they have told you is good in my ears. Amen. So let's keep believing. Let's keep pressing on that we can stay on course. Amen. This morning, as we stand to our feet, we want to read from the book of Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. We want to read from verse 1. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 19, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, 
Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We pray that the Holy Ghost that inspired this portion, this piece of scripture to be written, may he come, Lord, and expound it to our hearts today. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Shall I be seated? So God richly bless you all. Amen. Amen. And so if, if, if I don't get to where I want to get to today, God willing, we'll continue on Friday and we'll take it into the Saturday meeting. Like I said last Friday before I left, I preached on the message, the promise of the Father. Which we know is the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, and we want to continue on that team. Hallelujah. Because being baptized by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ, that is my assurance. That is your assurance. That is the assurance of every child of God. That you are going to make it to the rapture. That you are going to spend eternity with the Lord. Yes, we know at the white throwing judgment. Some are going to come in but that is at the discretion of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is uh, Matthew 25. Matthew, Depending on what they have done. But yes, I don't want to wait till the white throne judgment. You don't want to wait till the white throne judgment because you don't know what the Lord will say to you. But to be certain, to be certain, to be assured, hallelujah, to have no doubt in your mind that as a child of God, once we still have the breath of life, why God has so granted us grace, oh, we want to press on until we are baptized by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ. Sealed unto the day of our redemption. And that is why we want to dedicate that Saturday meeting to that. And like I said, all are invited. Even if you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, we are all invited. Because the going is going to not get uh, easier. The going is going to get tougher and tougher. In the book of Acts chapter 4, when the going got tough for the believers, after the gentleman at the beautiful gate had been healed, and they threatened the disciples. We read from verse 29. Acts chapter 4. And now, Lord, behold your threatenings. We're living in an hour. We're living in a time where iniquity is so much abounding until the love of many are growing cold. I mean, look at the way the church room is filled today. Our God is not just a God of Sunday service. 
Hallelujah. But every time the believers meet, because God will be present, you don't want to miss Jehovah's meeting. And so we want all to come. All are invited. And so they all gathered, all the disciples. Peter, John, James, all of them gathered. And they say, Lord, behold your treacheries. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal. That signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. This was after Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost had come down on the day of Pentecost and filled them, yet when the going got tough, oh, they, they were not only looking back to Pentecost, but they prayed them out. Oh, the Lord, let our cup run over. Lord, fill my cup and let it run over. Let we are getting closer and closer to the camp of the Lord. One back and we spoke about the wise and the foolish virgins. And in Matthew chapter 25. Hallelujah. Remember without the oil. Now I don't even know why I have digressed from the original message I was preaching. I, mean, I don't know not today. Not today. Men, I men, started a teaching on the marriage of the Lamb has come. But we are talking about these things because to be in that marriage, to be in that marriage, to be united with Christ, you must have the Holy Ghost. You must be have the Holy Ghost in order to be united with Him. I was just thinking, why am I even digressing from that original question? And then I thought, oh, it must be because, because that, is, that is what it takes to be in the marriage. In Matthew chapter 25. And while they went, verse 10, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they went to buy, and they that were ready. How were they ready? They were ready because they had oil in their lamps. It wasn't when it came. That wasn't the time to go look for the oil. Oh, hallelujah. But when it came, they were ready. We're talking about the second coming of Christ. Our readiness for that hour. Our readiness for our translation. Our readiness to be caught up in the skies when the Lord does come. We must have oil in our lamps. Praise. That will be our only ticket. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. Just like at the airport. airport. Hallelujah. When you are traveling to a place, Hallelujah. After you've gone through all the checks, first you go through immigration, and they check your passport, that you actually who you say you are, and then you go through screening. The screening is to make sure that you are not carrying anything on you that you are not supposed to carry. They have the guidelines 
No, I mean, I you tell me. So when you them. buy the ticket, no, I don't hate ticket. Eh. When you are doing your checking, no, they no, I call. Oh, they've eh. got all the long checklist. I mean, I don't need a car call. You can't carry a gun. Car. You can't carry a knife. Eh, oh, no, you can't, can't carry this. Oh, no, and so oh, no, after you have gone through that first checkpoint, no, I can't turn the car. Car, 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 car. And then look at your passport. Then you go to a second stage of screening. But you still haven't reached your destination. And to be able to reach your destination, you must have a ticket. That shows where you are going. Praise the name of Amen. the Lord. Amen. The natural times are spiritual. The prophet said in the message, Israel and the church, part four. Somebody was saying, are you happy? Brother Abraham said, sure, I am happy. How can I keep from being happy? And know what I know. Christ saved me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Give me a ticket to heaven. So why can't I be happy? Why should I worry myself with all the things of the world around me? When you have been sealed by the Holy Ghost into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And you have a desire in your soul. Always to live a life pleasing to the Lord. The prophet said, why should I be happy? When Christ saved me, feed me with the Holy Ghost, give me a ticket for heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That should be the position of the believer. So we're speaking on, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And when I talk about the promise of the Father, we read from the book of Acts. Chapter 1 and verse 4 and 5. Jesus, Jesus told them to wait for the promise of the Father. Hallelujah. Where John truly baptized with water. But the promise of the Father was that not many days hence you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And so when they waited in the upper room, when they waited, According to the word of the Lord, they were waiting because the word of God told them to. The Lord, this is what your word says. And therefore, Lord, we are waiting. Lord, that do something special. Lord, do something unique. Lord, have a touch in my soul. I don't want to assume it. And so they waited and they waited and they waited. And then when the day of Pentecost was come, the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They went out preaching everywhere. The people heard them preach. And they said, men and brethren, this that you have, this that you have, how can we also be possessors? That is when Peter also told them, repent every one of you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39, repent every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise. So that promise is a gift. God has promised to give a gift to his children. Listen to what the prophet said about the gift of the Holy Ghost. A gift is not, is not solicited. An unsolicited present. Oh, you say that you think, oh, I want to surprise my friend. 
And so before you, somebody brings you something. So I want to give this to you. You've not gone soliciting for it. But when you have it, you cherish it. But when you have it, you cherish it. And the Holy Ghost is the gift of God to us. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is the gift of God to us. But you must have a desire in your heart. Hallelujah. You must have a desire in your heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. You must have a desire in your heart for it. So it's the gift of God to us. So Paul says, and because you are sons, hallelujah, God has sent forth the Holy Spirit of his son into your heart. Because you are sons, but you must make yourself ready to be able to receive that gift when God wants to give it to you. In the message, Israel and the church, paragraph yeah. 45, part four. listen to what God said, uh, the prophet said, about the gift of the Holy Spirit. So God gave Abraham the promise. And he believed the promise. And it was reckoned to him for righteousness. But he gave him the sign of circumcision as a seal of the promise. He gave him the promise. The promise was that all this land Okay. I'm going to give it to you and your seed after you. Genesis 15. So you know, so you say, what the know. land and breadth of all of this. And it was even imputed unto him for righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. But yeah. along the line, yeah. God gave him the seal of circumcision. You know, I like it, I to show that Abraham, I recognize your faith. You have believed my promise. You have left your country. You have left your kindred. You have left your father's house to come and follow me. To come and journey with me. And now I recognize your faith. So I want to make you unique. Different from every other nation. So he gave them the sign of circumcision. It was to seal the promise. No, the seal of the promise. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe God by faith that you are saved and accepting. And whenever you do, God gives you the Holy Ghost as the seal of the promise that he promised you. The Holy Ghost is a gift of God. That is what Peter said. Hallelujah. Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And give that counts because of his promise to his children. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Holy Ghost is a gift of God. That's right. That circumcises the heart. Cuts away the surplus flesh. Makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, there you are. Now. It's nothing you had to do with yourself. 
Hallelujah. It's nothing you have to do with yourself. You just want to come and take God at his word. That God, the Bible tells us, you are not a man that you should lie. Hallelujah. Have you said and shall you not do it? Have you promised and shall you not fulfill it? Oh, so, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am in your presence. You gave me the presence. Promise that when I have set my house in order, when I have repented, I have been baptized by immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that Lord, you give me the gift of the Holy Ghost, so that it's no longer me that lives, but it is Christ living in me. Lord, I am ready for that journey. Lord, I am ready for that challenge. Lord, I am ready for that transformation. So there is no longer me that is living. But it is you living your life through me. A tree known by his fruits. I don't want to bear my own fruit. But Lord, come inside of me. It's nothing you have to do with yourself. It's a gift of God. And when you believe correctly, God gives it to you is by faith. Praise the name of God. Amen. Do you believe it's by faith? Do you believe that God keeps his word? Do you believe that God keeps his promise? And that is how we want to start a year Not only this year. But Lord, I want to start something with you. That is going to take me beyond this earth into eternity. Lord, that would transform my life. Oh, that would transform me into the very image of Christ. There was a time that Abraham preached a series in his church. You talk about the Holy, what is the Holy Ghost? What is the Holy Ghost? What was the Holy Ghost giving for? And in starting those meetings, the prophet said this. In the message, what is the Holy Ghost? And as we begin these meetings, I want you to have that same mindset. The prophet said, and this week night, we are greatly pressed to speak on eternal things for the soul. Hallelujah. We know when a body is healed. That makes us all happy. Because we know that it definitely shows that our God heals the sick. When people are in sick, we see the pain. The struggle they go through. And so when we pray, and God heals the sick, it makes us to be happy. It makes us to rejoice. Because we know we are serving the living God. Our God that does miracles. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But that sick person, if they live long enough, will perhaps be sick again. And maybe with the same disease that they were healed of, that doesn't take away healing. The doctor will give medicine for pneumonia. And maybe two days later, they will die with pneumonia. After he, the doctor has pronounced them well. It reoccurs again. But when that soul is healed, but when that soul is healed, but when that 
soul is healed. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You have then in you eternal life. And that is why we are thinking about it now. That is why we are talking about it now. Because I believe we are close to going home. And we want to be ready, church. I want to be ready, church. We all want to be ready, church. We don't want to leave anybody behind. Moses said, We will not leave our cattle behind. Moses said, We will not leave our anything behind. Pharaoh, we are going with everything. And God has called us. He said, we shall be saved in our household. We shall be saved in our household. Oh, Satan, hear me today. We are not leaving anyone behind. God give us that grace. We want the healing of the soul. Because this time we are going in. This is an hour of desperation. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But when the soul is healed, you have then in you eternal life. And I believe that we are so close to the coming of the Lord Jesus. That it behooves us to do all that we possibly can to bring every soul to the kingdom. To bring the kingdom to the people. That we might be healed in our spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Yes, so that is what we are talking about this morning. What you are doing, and our text is what we read in the Acts chapter 19. Paul came across these disciples of John. And they have believed John. Because they were baptized unto the baptism of John. In Matthew chapter 3, the Bible reads, in those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. And a little girded about his loins. And his meat was locust and water Then went out unto him all Jerusalem. And all Judea. And all the rages ran about Jordan. And they were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So these disciples that Paul met. When he passed through Ephesus, they have believed John's message. And they have been baptized by John. But the baptism of repentance, that was not the only message of John. Because in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, he is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So yes, John came to do the work of preparation. And those that believe his message, they repented. 
They had the baptism of repentance. And John said that is not all of it. But there's one coming after me. He is going to baptize you the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, hallelujah. So when Paul met the disciples, it must have been certain years have passed. Remember, John came to introduce the Messiah. Jesus preached for about three and a half years. Yes, Chris, then Saul tried to destroy the people when the Holy Ghost baptism came. God met him on the road to Damascus. Hallelujah. And after that, when you read Galatians chapter 1, Paul said he went into Arabia. Oh, to check his revelation. That this pillar of fire that spoke to him. How does it compare? the scripture. Then after that, he came back to Damascus. Spent another three years before he went to Jerusalem to Jerusalem. confer with Peter and Peter. But at least from the time of John, from the time of John, at least we can say six and a half years ago. Before Paul Daddy, met this disciple, Hallelujah. Six Amen. and a half years. Believing the message. Going on to what John said. But yet they have not moved to that next step. But they have not moved to the next step. They still held on to John's message. They believe that John was the forerunner. They believe that John was the messenger of Malachi 3. And you may be here today. And you may be here this morning. And it's good thing to believe that William Bram is the prophet of Malachi 4. Oh, but that in itself is not enough. Hallelujah. Just like it was not enough for John's disciples. He said there's one coming after him. He will baptize of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when Paul met them, it was important for Paul. You believe John's message all these years. You, you left Phariseeism behind. You left Sadduceeism behind. You left Presbyterian behind. You left Methodist behind. You left Roman Catholics behind. You left Pentecostalism yes, behind. Pentecostal You've left yeah. all these denominations yes, behind. Yes, but have yeah. you received the Holy Ghost yes, since you came yes, to yes, believe yes, the yes, message of the hour? Yes, That's the question we are asking ourselves. Yes, that is what we are asking ourselves yes, today. Yes, because there is no need. Yes, there is yes, no point yes, leaving yes, all of those things behind yes, and then getting to Kadesh Barnea. Yes, and say so we can't go and possess it. The Lord is there for possessing. I say the promised land is there for possessing. Oh, give me that land, God. I don't care the enemy is there. I don't care what battles in this my body. I don't care what battles in this my body. I don't care the enemies with thee. Or the enemies with thou. Lord, I want my possession. Caleb said. Caleb said. Hallelujah. I may be 80 years older. Oh, but Moses gave me a promise. That when we get to this land, oh, this mountain is going to be mine. So Joshua gave me the mountain. Joshua gave me the mountain. Oh, that somebody will say to the Lord, Lord, I am here this morning. Lord, I am here in your presence. You gave me the promise of your way. Lord, give me that promise. Lord, grant that promise to me. Lord, take away my unbelief. Lord, take away my carnal mind. Lord, anything that battles me. Lord, just take it away. Lord, send the fire 
into my soul. You talk a fire into my soul. Lord, send the fire into my heart. You talk a lava screaming. Lord, I want to be burned. Lord, let the coal of fire touch my lips. Lord, let your coal of fire touch my lips. Lord, I am ready. Here I am, Lord. Jehovah, here I am, Lord. Lord, let your coal of fire touch my lips. Lord, I am tired of this old nature. Yeah, of this old habits, of this old ways. Lord, I need that internal Nicho, transformation. Nicho, Nicho, Praise Nicho. the Lord. Amen. Paul asked them, Paolo, have you received the Holy Ghost? Paul didn't assume. Paolo, oh, these are the disciples oh, of na, God. Na, you are the, the hey, who am I? No, but Paul knew. Si, Paolo, he wrote to the Romans. Hallelujah. In Romans 8. I believe 19b. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. And verse 19. Verse 9, rather. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. 99B. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you, have, you are none of Christ. That is why when they came back, Jesus said in Matthew 25, Jesus said, I never knew you. Yes, Chris, the car back in the year. They had the midnight cry, all right. I mean, now, boom. They had John's boy. message, all right. I mean, you are the they, they, they sat under the message, all right. I mean, that's your you must They did everything that John asked them to do, all right. When you had a car, I mean, pay, 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 pay. But they failed to move on to that next step. See, no need channel. I'm a channel, okay. And church, we want to move on to that next what step. What about the no need channel? Like Moses said, Pharaoh, we are going. Pharaoh, yeah. But we are not leaving anything. We are not leaving anything. We behind. are not leaving anything. We are not leaving anything. And I want you to believe that in your heart. The Lord, we are going in the rapture. Lord, by grace, we are going in the rapture. Lord, you gave these children to me. Lord, you gave these parents to me. Look, the brother Abraham said, the angel Abraham all that love you and all that you love all that love you and all that you love Amen. they'll be there and by them. And if I love my children, I want to cry out to the Lord. Lord, Lord I am not leaving anyone behind. Lord, let the fire touch them. Lord, let something strike them. Lord, let them have a road of Damascus experience. They may be rebellious like Paul. But Lord, you gave Paul a Damascus experience. the same yesterday, today, forever. Lord, I am claiming that son. Lord, I am claiming that daughter. Lord, I am claiming my possession. Lord, send down and give them a road of Damascus experience. Listen to what the prophet said in the message talking. Yeah, the question you name. Reading from paragraph 249. Amen and amen. Amen. Paul said in the message talking. Yeah, the question you name. Now you people that is listening to this, on tape, you women, you men, you listen a minute. If you ever believe me, you believe it now. It is time to quit fasting with one another. Oh, he said it's against me. He said that against me. I don't want my children to play with his children. Oh, why did the deacon speak to my children that way? The prophet said it is time to quit the fasting. 
with one another. Believe the message of the Bible. Believe Jesus Christ. Love and honor and respect one another. Whether it's a kid or an older person, let's show respect one to another. When you respect that sister, you don't go speak about her evil to somebody else. When you respect that brother, you don't go and bite that brother to somebody else. It shows that we do not respect one another. And how can God send his Holy Ghost amongst us? Oh, respect one another. Men respect your wives. Hallelujah. You wonder why is something blocking me? No, I mean, no, no, no. Why is something, oh, the Bible says, live with them with this knowledge. That they are the weaker best. That your prayers be not hindered. That is the word of God. Your prayer that you are talking to God. That Lord, I am ready to receive the Holy Spirit. That prayer will not go nowhere. When you don't even have respect for one another. God help us. I say God help us. God's grace reach out to us. We will put our houses in order. Oh, when Elijah put everything in order. He didn't cry for the Lord. He said, Lord Jehovah. I have done all this thing. According to thy word. And the fire fell. And the fire fell. Oh, by the promise of Bill, the promise of Ba, they cried from morning to evening. They were cutting themselves. They were shouting and rolling. They were screaming and screaming. But what they had done was not according to his word. All I am screaming this morning is that we want to do things according to his word. And when Elijah said, he said, Lord, let it be known. Lord, let it be known that I am your prophet and that I have done all these things according to thy way. According to thy way. And when Elijah said that, fire came down from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. The fire came down from heaven. When he said, I have done all things. According to that yeah, word. And when we do everything. According to the word of the Lord. The fire of God will come down. So men respect your wife. You respect your homes. Hallelujah. Amen. Respect your homes. Bring your home together. Because remember, this lamb was for the home. Hallelujah. This lamb. Hallelujah. Not a small lamb that they killed in Egypt. But this lamb of God. Paul said, Repent. Hallelujah. Say, God shall save you and your household. It's for you to believe. It's for me to believe. That Lord, that is your promise. I am I'm believing. Hallelujah. Look. Job, Job, Joanne. Job, Job, sacrifice for his children. He went to the Lord on behalf of his children. Say, but adventure. Whilst they were doing things, they have done something contrary to the Lord. Lord, my son will not follow me to church. But I am not going to disown him. Lord, I am praying for him. Lord, I am crying out for him. My daughter may have found his own way. Say he, he doesn't believe the message. But Lord, you gave her to me as a daughter. Lord, I am your daughter. Lord, I am claiming her for the kingdom of God. Lord, I am believing this promise that we shall be saved in our household. It is time to exercise faith. 
Work is faith expressed. Work is faith expressed. It's time to express our unflinching, unfailing faith in the promise of God. The lamb was for the home, not just one. For the whole home, too. How to be brought, how, how, how to be brought. Everything had to be brought in. We should love each other. Believers should separate themselves from the world. So he sent as a prophet to say, come out of here, my dear. Let us not take that word lightly. Hallelujah. You are either in or you are not in. Oh, yeah, me no, baby. Don't come and walk around the message. And then you go and also mingle with the denomination. Because the Bible says it is cursed. Not the people in there. But the system is accursed. Praise the God may have his children there. But God will be calling them out. God is calling them out. And that is what Christ was doing in the Laodicean age. Knocking and calling his own out. Praise the Lord. So we don't want to, we have nothing to do with denominationality. God is calling us his own. If the Bible says, come out of hell, my people, come out of hell. And be ye not partakers of her sins and iniquities. Paragraph 251. Notice. They were not just yet come together to talk about the message. Hallelujah. Oh, Moses said, okay. we should kill a lamb and apply it. I don't know when we are going to get the lamp. No, we've seen God do miracles in the lives of Moses. Hallelujah. But that was the message of Moses. Moses Kill the lamp and apply it to the door. They weren't come to talk about the message. They come together to apply the blood, to apply the token. That's what you must do. Pastor Neville. Pastor Neville, to this congregation, trustees, deacons, brethren. Oh, the prophet must have been. It's a serious hour. Say, Pastor Neville. Congregation. Asafobi. Trustees. Trustees. Deacons. Deacons. Brethren. Kenyame. It's time we lay aside the foolishness of the world. This and what J. The Kajin Question. We lay aside everything else. This and this. I can no for a We have seen enough now. What now? We have seen the, what God can do. We have seen enough now. So we are positive and sure. Oh, like we sing. It's true. Oh, yeah. It's true. God's wonderful promise is true. I've trusted and tasted and tried. And I know. God's promise is true. We have seen enough church. I said we have seen we enough church to know this no message is true. To know this message is real. To know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has lifted himself out of history. And and that in our midst. You are firm, he's here. So if he's here, they want to go that one more step. Lord, give me the promise of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. We have seen enough now. So we are positive sure. And the token must be applied. Without it, 
You are going to perish. You must perish. Without the talking, without the Holy Ghost, which is the talking in this our day. Oh, Church of the Living God. God calls all of us to wake up. Hallelujah. God calls all of us to wake up. From the pulpit here all the way to the kingdom. The prophets are without the Holy Ghost, you will perish. And that is what should drive us. And say, Lord, give me all your imagination. Lord, here is my cup, Lord. Lord, come and quench the chest in my soul. Lord, I am reaching out to you, Lord. I'm reaching out to you, Lord. Lord, I'm reaching out to you, Lord. Lord, let me tie the hem of your garment. That that virtue that is in you. Lord, I am ready to draw. Lord, I am ready to draw. Lord, I am ready to draw. Oh, hallelujah. If the pipes are dirty, Kaji. If the pipes, if the channels are dirty, Lord washes by the water of your word. Lord cleanses it by the water of your word. Oh, hallelujah. Lord cleanses it by the water of your word. And Lord flows through me, Lord. So John's disciples, John's disciples, they have been following the message for some time. But when Paul made that, it was, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? It's not when you believe. And that is how the confusion that goes around. Oh, when you believe you've received the Holy Ghost. Oh, when you said, I accept the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Oh, then you received the Holy Ghost. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost? Not when you believe. Yes, God can give it to you when you believe. But when you believe. It is the prerogative of our God. It is the sovereignty of our God. It is the sovereignty of our God. Hallelujah, because why Peter yet spoke the word in the house of Cornelius, why he yet spoke the word, the Bible says some receive the Holy Ghost, they receive it, so God can give it, but what Paul said was, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed, not when you believed, not when you accepted the Lord as your Savior. That is contrary to the scriptures. The scripture we read, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That is after you believe. After you have believed. That Jesus is the Savior. After you have believed. And started walking in the, in, 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 by the scriptures. After you have believed. And, 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 and open up yourself. To be washed by the water of the way. After you have believed. And you are allowing the word to circumcise your heart. To take all the trash of the world out of you. And when God saw Abraham, that he has made a long journey with him, he has truly left everything. He has left his country. He has left his kindred. He has left his father's house. He has made a long journey. And he saw Abraham. He recognized Abraham's faith. He wasn't going to go back. He gave him the seal of circumcision. Abraham, I've recognized your faith. I've recognized your faith, Abraham. Abraham. But some think, when you believe, then you have the Holy Ghost. No. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost? Let's listen to this quote from the prophet. God's provided way of approach to fellowship. Said now, no disregard to my own baptist denomination. That I love so much. 
But I was told by them that was what we did. We just believed and then we were born of the Spirit. Born again of the Spirit. But I come to find out that wasn't just exactly all the truth. They always told me that Acts 9, Acts 19 said, have you received the Holy Ghost? You did receive the Holy Ghost when you believed. That is what the denominational Baptist church was telling the prophet. But the Bible says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Since you believed. That is what Paul asked. Have you received the Holy Ghost since and you, you believe? And all that mumu koko or baby no yes hello. Baptist too. I'm on Baptist B J. They have been converted and uh, Apollo teaching. Yeah, Apollo. Cholo. He was a converted lawyer. He the lawyer. The Apollo. Who believed on God through John the Baptist. Yeah, even you may be. Can you hear Baptist? They were they were real Baptist people. The Baptist B J. Being baptized. And having great fellowship. Proving by the word that Jesus was Christ. But when Paul came along with the Pentecostal blessing. He said. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That was the question. And that is still the question today. Don't be angry when a brother asks you. When you, you demonstrate you, some you, behavior and somebody asks you. No, but you, you have you received the Holy Ghost? Ah, I know you're not more cocoa. Oh, you are praying the pastor, I want to get married. No, oh, I didn't know somebody called me to about the banana. But Abraham said. In the message paradox, he said that gentleman was not fit to marry. You make hell on earth for that young woman because he wasn't converted. He hasn't been baptized. By the Holy and so when you say, oh, I want to get married, and that deacon is asking you. That minister is asking you. Brother, have you received the Holy Ghost? Because he, oh, he desires your well-being. Without the Holy Ghost, you, it, it's going to be hell on earth for you and your wife. It takes the Holy Spirit of God to blend those two characters together. Amen. Amen. That was the question. And that is the question we're still asking today. In the message, Jehovah Jireh. Part one. Paragraph 44, the prophet said. Someone said to me long, not long ago. Say, Brother Abraham. Now you know. Now you know you was a good Baptist. Baptist. I said, I still feel that. But I have just raised a little higher. He said, well, now look, said. Come on. Abraham believed God. Abraham And it was imputed to him for righteousness. That was Genesis 15 when God spoke to Abraham. How much more could Abraham do? But to believe. What could Abraham do but to believe? He said, when you believe, we receive the Holy Spirit. That was this person talking to Brother Abraham. This person talking to Brother Abraham. So what could Abraham do but to believe? And the Bible says that if, when he believed, it was imputed to him for righteousness. So he was telling Brother Abraham, okay. what yeah. could Abraham do but to believe? In other words, what can the believer do but to believe? Yeah, what we can do is to believe but we are believing on to receiving the Holy Ghost. 
And he said, this man said to Brother Abraham, when we believe God, we receive the Holy Ghost. I said, different from St. Paul. Because Paul said in Acts chapter 19, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Not when you believed. But since you believed, he said, well, Abraham believed God. That is all he could do. And I said, true. But then God gave him the order of circumcision as a confirmation that he has received his faith. If he was never circumcised, if he has never circumcised you by the Holy Ghost, then he hasn't received your faith yet. That's a strong statement. Hallelujah. Amen. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, if he hasn't circumcised you, by the Holy Ghost, he hasn't received your faith yet. That is the circumcision of the heart and the spirit. God gives the Holy Ghost as a confirmation he has received your faith. So now, if you stop believing, scrambling around, and just believe God, God will circumcise the heart. That cast off all unbelief. Circumcises the world. And all unbelief are And then you stand the word alone. Okay, you Praise the name of the Lord. Hey. So Paul asked that question. They have believed John's message. And yet when Paul met them, it was very important for the apostles. Hey, yeah. Have the token been applied Paolo, okay. to your lives? Have the token be applied to your lives? Okay. Oh, I know you sing, I believe John's message. Oh, oh you shouted Amen when he blasted the Pharisees. Genuinely, you repented. And so you went to John for baptism. And since that experience, oh, yes, the problem is the experience. The problem is instead of staying with the way. But these people, yes, they still stay with the experience of John. They did not associate with any other religion. It's not when you believe. It's since you believed. Can you hear you say? Let me read this also from the church age book. Uh, in the Smyrna church age, the prophet said, now I realize that it is going to be confusing for a moment. Because most people know I was ordained a Baptist preacher. And I have steadfastly declared that the Baptists have missed it for saying you receive the Holy Ghost when you believe. For that is not so. You receive him since you believe. So the prophet reads Acts chapter 2, no. Acts 19, 2 to 6. There it is, he comments. There it is. Paul asked, Paolo B, have you received sins not when you believe? And, and, and there is a great difference there. For it is after we believe that we receive. 
Hallelujah. Hey. Not when we believe. Hey. We believe unto receiving the promise. But some just stop short. Oh, I believe. I believe. And we just end there. We've come out of Egypt. Egypt? God has not brought us out of Egypt to wander in the wilderness. He has brought us out to take us into the promised land. Our promised land is the Holy Ghost. We need to go and possess the land. This is our claiming time. This is our possession time. Because he himself came. He has done the work of redemption. Hallelujah. In this our age. He came down in Revelation 10. After doing the work of redemption. He came to claim his redeemed possession. And as a child of God. He has given us a promise. A promise of the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is time to claim it, Lord. It is time to receive it, Lord. It is time to keep knocking on the door. The Bible says, He that knocketh, He that seeketh, He that asketh, and knocketh means not just once. But continuously knocking. Continuously knocking. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I need more of you. Oh, if during the day, somebody crossed my path, and I demonstrated some anger, oh, it is time to pray. I said, this anger, Lord, is so righteous. Lord, I want you to completely cut it off. Praise the Lord. Amen. If during the day, there was an institution, there was a circumstance where I couldn't stand for God. And I compromised. It isn't a baby you compromise a little. You see within yourself. When you stand before the mirror of the way, I am not what he wants me to be. Lord, get rid of this compromising spirit. Lord, I don't want it around me no more. Every day dying to ourselves. Every day dying to that old man. That Christ may live in us. That Christ will come and live in us. Oh, he's looking for a vessel to live in. Hallelujah. Amen. And there is a great difference there. For it is after we believe that we receive. Ephesians 1.13 is an exact word repeat of what happened today. Ephesus in Acts chapter 9. 19. When Paul wrote the Ephesians, in Ephesians 1.13, Paul said, In whom ye also trusted, after ye heard the word of truth, after, after, the gospel of salvation. In whom also after ye believe. Not when you believe. But after you believe. When you heard the word. When the word was coming. And others were living. And Jesus asked them. Would you also live? So, oh, no, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. We are staying here. We are staying poor because we have tasted it. I always told people this at the beginning. I always told people this at the beginning of when God brought me to the message. Even if this message is false, I don't know of a gospel since my birth. That has drawn me closer to God. That makes me love Jesus more than I ever did. 
So even if nothing at all, that alone makes me to know something that draws me closer to God that makes me love God more that makes me know him more it has to be Jehovah God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you are too late to tell me William oh, Bram is a false prophet. After you believe, Oh, hey, oh, you say, ye, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So Paul was writing the Ephesians. He was reminding them of when he passed through Ephesus. That it was after they had believed that they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So now here is my point. Too many of our modernists, even our fundamentally so-called, believe unto salvation at a certain specific time, which in many Cases is oh, called oh, making oh, a decision. Yeah. And that he has been called and that has been called receiving Christ you know, or being I told born again. Now to receive Christ is to receive his spirit. To receive his spirit is to be born again. To receive his spirit is to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So these folks believe that is wonderful. But they stop there. You receive the Holy Ghost after you believe. It has always been that way. And it will always be. The prophet goes on. So what is this that caused this misunderstanding? The answer is experience. We've gone by experience and not the word. Oh, this is what God did for me. So that becomes a standard for everybody. God deals with us individually. And he deals with us according to his way. Away with experience as your measuring line. There is only one plumb line. Only one rod. And that is the word. Now watch carefully and get this. Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? This is the whole of our problem right there. People repent of their sins. They get baptized in water. But they don't go on and receive the Holy Ghost. You believe unto receiving the Holy Spirit. Believing on Jesus is the step in the right direction. It's a step in the right direction towards the Holy Ghost. But the people stop there. They go as far as that you receive when you believe it. It is, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? The exact literal translation is, did you, having previously believed, receive the Holy Ghost? The people believed and then stopped. You don't receive the Holy Ghost when you believe. You don't receive the Holy Ghost when you believe unto Him. No, have you repented? You go on and receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. 
you go on to receive so it's not about when you believe. It's about since you believe. It's a requirement of Jehovah. Paul wrote to the Romans. Which we read a while ago. In the book of Romans 8 and verse 9b. If any have not the spirit of Christ, none of his. So it is very important. It's a question that goes for all Christian ages. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why the Lord told them, go and wait for the promise of the Father. After three and a half years of working, working with the Lord, it's your faith reaching up to him. Is your faith being recognized by him? And as we hear all of these things, it's a challenge to our faith. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our thoughts. Prepare our minds. That battleground. We want the Lord to have total control. That Lord, this is your promise. Lord, give me the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ that accepts nothing but your word. The mind of Christ that accepts nothing but his word. Look, let me close on this. Peter have walked with the Lord for three and a half years. And yet when the crucifixion was approaching, in the gospel of Luke chapter 22, hallelujah, listen to what Jesus told Peter. He has walked with the Lord. Remember he sent out the ten. The twelve. They went to preach, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. He sent out the seventy. Hallelujah! Say, go and preach the gospel. Cast out the dead. Cast out the demons. Raise the dead. And all of those things happen. Yet in Luke chapter 22, when they were facing the crucifixion, in Luke 22 verse 31, and that is what I want to leave every one of us to think about. This was Peter. Who, hallelujah. Jesus, who do men say that I am? So some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. Hallelujah. He said, but who do you say that I am? Thou are the Christ. The son of the living God. Then Jesus said, Heaven and uh, flesh and blood are not revealed. To you, but my Father who is in heaven. So all the basics were right in Peter's life. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan had desired to have you. Now. That he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Walk with the Lord. Preach the gospel. Cast out devils. Heal the sick. And yet Jesus was telling him, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. When you read the rest of that chapter, you understand why Jesus told him. Because for three times, for three times, he denied the Lord. He even so I never knew him. Somebody saw even the way you speak gives you. Say I never knew him. 
distancing himself. But when the day of Pentecost came, when the day of Pentecost came, remember John 17, 17. Jesus had prayed, sanctify them by thy word. For thy word is true. In Ephesians chapter 5, say, sanctify them by thy word. Washing of water by the word. So yet they have believed Jesus. They have walked with Jesus. The word has thoroughly washed them. But the Holy Ghost hadn't come yet. And so when Peter faced that challenge, he said, no, 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 no. I don't even know him. Say so you are one of him. Are you me. not also Galilean? Galilean Say so what are you talking about? You are. But when the Holy Ghost came, came on the day of Pentecost, yeah, Pentecost and, they, and they healed the man yeah, at the beautiful gate. Yeah, and they arranged them before the Sahidri came. And they threatened them. Peter asked them. Do we obey you or we obey God? Tell me. The Bible says when they beheld their boldness. When the Holy Ghost comes in. It does something to the soul. It does something to the individual. God has brought us this far. We want to go all the way into the night. Shall we rise to our feet? Are you in the church? Triumphant. Are you in the Savior's ground? Come and be baptized into the body. Oh, and forever more abide. Oh, are you in the church? Are you in the Savior's blood? Come and be baptized. 
Just talk to him. He's got a promise for you. He's got a promise for me. The promise is the promise of the Father. The promise of the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why don't you speak to the Lord? Even before we have our closing prayer. Whatever Lord is laying on your heart. Whatever God is, is just reaching out to you. Oh, just speak back to him. Oh, speak about him as a son speaking to his father. As a daughter speaking to his father. Lord, here I am. Oh, here I am, Lord. Lord, thy word has come to me. Lord, I'm just reaching out to you. Lord, I see where I'm falling short. Lord, I see where I'm falling short. Lord, my cup is empty. 
Lord, my cup is empty. Lord, I want to lift it up to you. Oh, Lord, like Isaiah. Come on, Isaiah. Lord, like Isaiah, let the coal of fire touch my I lips like today. Lord, I am just reaching out to you, Lord. Just talk to the Lord. He always speaks to Jehovah God. He's ready to hear you. He's ready to answer your prayer. Oh, he said, he that asks and receives, he that seeks will find. He that knocks at the door will open to him. So why don't you go to your heavenly father? Say, Lord, this is the need of my heart. Lord, this is the need of my heart. Lord, this is the need of my soul. Lord, I'm just reaching out to you, Lord.
Let's be still before the Lord. Meditate on the things that He has spoken to us. Be still in His presence. Think on these things. Our home going is near. The world is falling apart. God is calling his children home. They that were ready. They that were ready. They went to the group. It's all about our readiness. service to a close. I want to invite our brother Theophilus. I told him to you if you just come and close us in prayer. Let's pray. We cannot go we are so much thankful to you for this very hour. We said, where two, or, where two or three have gathered in your name, you are with them, O God. And we thank you that truly you are with us. We saw the demonstration of the word of God. And we believe that, Father, it is you who is speaking to us. Speaking to the individuals, O God. And Lord, we are standing in your presence this very hour. Asking, Lord, for grace. Asking, Lord, for grace, oh God. Our Heavenly Father, we don't want to leave anything behind, Lord. Therefore, we are praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that this very hour, Lord, search us, oh Lord. Uh, Lord, take away every trash out of our lives. And anything that will hinder us, oh Lord, take it away. For we are here and we are calling upon you to fill us, oh God. The word of God is coming. If the word of God is coming like this, oh Lord, then something's on the way. Something's on the way. But if the word of God caution us, Lord, all this time, oh Lord, about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then something is on the way. And we are praying, our Heavenly Father, this day, as we stand in your presence, Lord, we surrender. Lord, we surrender all to you, Lord. Lord, we pray, we pray that, Lord, have the old way. Lord, see our hopes, oh God. And Lord, stand for us, oh Lord. Lord, we pray that, Lord, that any trust in our homes, uh, we are praying that, Lord, this very hour, Lord, do something about it for us. Uh. We are weak, but they are strong. We are the God that can change the situation, Lord. Uh. Oh, Father, here we are. Lord, you can do more for us. And, Lord, we are depending upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh. Oh, Lord, we pray for our children, oh, God, that are coming, Lord. We pray that, Lord, may they to give them, Lord, revelation of the, this message of the hour. This is what you have given to us. Uh, and we pray that every Father, you will give them revelation that they may know the importance of the word of God. The Father that come to church will not be just following, but they know what they are about in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, who, who said in your word, when we ask anything in your name, we should believe it and we shall receive it, Lord. Therefore, we are depending upon you. We are believing you, Lord, that what, Lord, we have heard today, and what we are desiring for this very hour, our souls, Lord, will receive it in Jesus' name. Grant it, our Heavenly Father. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, help us, O oh God, to enter in. The Brown said that, Lord, when we enter in, O oh God, then we are resting. Our Heavenly Father, the only way the devil can come to us, we have to pass the way we also pass through, Lord. O oh Father, I am praying. Lord, see us through justification, sanctification, and Holy Ghost baptism. May our souls be rest in you, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, see your children, Lord, stand before you. They have needs on their hearts, Lord. Needs, oh Heavenly Father, some are here, Lord, for healing. 
Tama here, Lord, for financial problems. Lord, I pray that, Lord, make a way for your children, Lord. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Christ, our dear Father, as we shall not belong, we shall be living this auditorium to our various homes. I pray that, Lord, the angels of the Lord that brought us here, may the same angels, Lord, take us each one of us home safely. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Heavenly Father, O Lord, for the preacher man. I'm asking for more grace upon his life. I'm praying for more anointing upon his life. That whenever I stand behind the pope, it should not be him. Because we are not here to come and see him. We are here to come and see you speaking through him, Lord. And this afternoon, Lord, you have done it. I want to see more and more each time we stand behind the pulpit. Grant it our Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord, and commit our pastor before thy throne of mercy. We believe that, Father, our God, you have started good, something good in his life. Uh, and I pray that, Lord, you bring it to completion, Lord. Uh, and want to see him again behind the pulpit, oh, Lord. Uh, with, another, with more anointing upon him, oh, Lord. Uh, oh, God, teaching us, oh, Lord, the ways of the Lord. Uh, we thank you and we bless your name. Uh, we give all the praise. I pray for Papa Tim also. Yes, Let your grace be upon him, Lord. Uh, whatever it might Jesus. be, Lord, come for him, oh, Lord. Uh, right. If you're coming back, oh, Lord, be your right. grace. Bring him here, O oh Lord, to come and continue his work. We give all the praise. We give all the honor. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So keep praying. Keep believing. Keep flashing. Hallelujah. Him that has begun the work. You never rest until he has bring it to come.